All right. Yes, Chair. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Can I welcome everyone to the Environmental and Sustainability Scrutiny Committee being held via the Microsoft Teams today, Tuesday, the 22nd of March, 2022, to consider the matters contained in the following agenda. This meeting will be recorded and made available to via view via the Council website, except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the image or audio of those individuals speaking will, will be publicly available to all via the recording on the Council website at www.cafili.gov.uk. Apologies, Julian and June. Any other apologies? Any other apologies? No, I'm aware of Chair. Do you want me to take a roll call? And if you can now take the roll call, yes. Thank you, Kath. No problem. Uh, members of the scrutiny committee in the first instance, if I call your name, just please indicate you're present. Uh, Councillor Mike Adams. Present. Uh, Councillor Tudor Davis. Present. Councillor Colin Ellsbury. I'm here. Councillor Mark Evans. Present. Councillor Anne Guy. Present. Councillor Adrian Hussey. Present. Councillor Steve Kent. Yeah, I'm here. Councillor Ariana Leonard. Present. Councillor Bob Owen. Present. And uh, Councillor Tom Williams. Present. Uh, they are cabinet members, Councillor uh, Jane Pritchard. I can see Councillor. Present, Pritchard. present, sorry, Kath. Yeah, Councillor Nigel George. Present. And Councillor Andrew Whitcomb. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. <coughs> Declaration of interest. Council and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal or prejudicial interests in respect of any items of business on this agenda in accordance with Local Government Act 2000 the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. Any declarations of interest? None? Right, I go to item three, Environment Sustainability Security Committee meeting held on the 8th of February, 2022. Well, accuracy is one, it's two, Page three, page four, and page five. Someone move, correct the record or otherwise. Someone move. I move, I'll move chair. chair. And seconded. Second. Thank you. We go to the vote and Kath, please. Thank you, members. If you can please complete the forms on the front of your screen. That's moved, Chair. That's carried, Chair. Councillor Hussey, I don't know if Councillor Davis has lost connection. Yeah, it looks like a car. So yeah, do you want to take over until he comes back? Yeah. So the minutes are carried, so we're just so on that, to the next item. Yeah. So the next item, item seven, is it? Uh, item four. Item four. I'm scrolling through my. Is it? It's whether there's anything in the calling, and there's nothing. Yeah. And then we're on to the work program in item five. Yeah. So you take that, Kath? Yes, I'll take that. Thank you, Councillor Hussey. Um, 
Good evening, members. If I just direct you to Appendix 1 of the work programme, um, as you know, that will see this is the last scrutiny meeting before the elections. Um, so the next meeting of this scrutiny committee will be held at the end of June, on the 28th of June. Uh, there are three items planned, the registrar ceremony fees, the um, wellbeing objectives end of year 2021 outturn report, and the public protection annual report. Um, so if members, the less members have any suggestions. I'm, I'm, I'm back in now, it went off again. All right. Oh, I, we guessed that, councillor. I'm just doing the work programme. All right, thank you very much. So if members are happy to move that, that work programme. Yeah, move that, uh, Kat. Is that a second to it? Seconder? Yeah, I'll second. Right, we go to the vote then. Yeah, the vote will be on your screens, members. And that's carried, Chair. Thank you. Right, we go to item six, and we've received in no calling for the cabinet reports. Am no, right? none. Oh, right, thank you. Then we go to item seven, which is the coal tip condition, status, and inspection regime, pages 17 to 24. Marcus, oh, sorry. Jamie first. Thank, thank, thank you, thank Tudor. You, Not to get me mixed up with Marcus, but. Um, well, no, it'd right. be an insult to Marcus, to be honest with you. But uh, go it's, on. It's, <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment on that, Chair. OK. Uh, so thank you, Chair. Um, in anticipation for what might have been discussed in the pre meeting um, regarding outcomes resulting from our evolving policy in light of the new requirements from Welsh Government, I suppose I could summarise by saying the new inspection forms developed by Welsh Government have been adopted and the focus of inspections have changed to identify planned and preventative maintenance works as opposed to reactive. Uh, Caffili County Borough Council now has a place of rolling programme of maintenance works utilising the authority's term service tips ma maintenance contractor. We've re uh, reviewed our, our tips portfolio via a data cleanse exercise undertaken jointly with the coal authority and together with the character categorisation of the tips to bring all in line with Welsh Government guidance. Chair, it's written in the report, but I feel it's important to highlight a number of things. So since Storm Dennis in February 2020, inspection and tips maintenance moved to engineering projects group and 141 inspections were undertaken in 2020, 95 inspections in 2021 and 134 a programme for 2022 in accordance with the risk assessment profiles. So currently the legislation doesn't give us uh, lo local authorities any power to enter private land. The suggestion is to negotiate with the owners to, to agree access if works are required on private tips. But members will see from table 5.6 that most of the tips within the county borough are actually in private hands. So I believe, and I'm sure members of the scrutiny committee will also agree, tougher enforcement on uh, private tips and a more rigorous inspection regime generally are to be welcomed and supported. Welsh Government has appointed the Law Commissioner to develop new legislation on regulation uh, coal tip safety priorities in Wales. Recommendations are likely to include the setting up of a new supervi supervisory board responsible for the registration of all tips, the classification and agreeing tip management plans. This will provide a consistent approach to tips inspection and maintenance across Wales. A considerable amount of work has taken place in recent years and members will note from 5.11 the second tranche of works undertaken during 2021 to 22. This indicates the work concentrated on major maintenance works and in particular the sites at Bedwas, Pontlotin, Abbabagoid, Abatusug and Penafta. The site at Bedwas required the largest investment where the quarry pond was dredged and the hillside drainage re-established through the construction of a series of new channels and carrier pipes. In total the predicted spend on tips maintenance for 2021-22 was just over a million pounds. A programme of maintenance works was put in place for the financial year 2020 to 2021 and 21 to 22 using grant funding made available by Welsh Government. The first tranche of works undertaken in 2020 to 2021 period focused on quick wins, so mainly dealt with the drainage maintenance and focused on clearing blocked and overgrown drainage channels. The extra funding has supported the use of inspectors, engineers from EPG, 
to undertake the inspections. And these said inspections and engineers have the technical background that makes them more suitable for this role and allowed sufficient time to be allocated to achieve CCBC inspection programme in full. It has also allowed progress on the backlog of maintenance works required for many of the TIP sites. So, Chair, in closing, uh, I would say that the report demonstrates the good work that's been undertaken within Caerphilly County Borough Council to date, but crucially, it offers a further and clear movement of travel in the right direction as we head towards further legislation expected later this year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Jamie. Marcus, do you want to wait until we have any questions or do you want to make any comment at this moment? I think uh, Councillor Fitch has more than adequately covered it, uh, Chair. Uh, the only comment I would make is there's no issues with any of the tips that we're aware of out there um, and the inspection regimes, uh, regimes are really robust. So I, I wouldn't want uh, members to take any other impression than uh, everything's safe and secure at the moment. OK, then. Right, if any members got any, what, you any questions or comments, please press the hand. But no one on there at the moment, but I know that Mike, you wanted to make a, ask a question. Yes, I've just put my hand up. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, and, and we've had such a comprehensive uh, introduction from Councillor Pritchard. Uh, much of my questions uh, and the answers uh, uh, are there within the question, but uh, I will go on with it anyway, and I'm sure Marcus will be able to very quickly uh, uh, placate my fears if I have any as well. And it goes back to uh, 517, uh, Marcus, um, and it's in terms of maintenance works and private tips, and that's the thing, isn't it? Welsh Government has indicated there is funding available. OK, but we've just been told that an awful lot of work is still going on to make sure there is a, re a regime available so that where we need to have automatic entry into places that we don't control, we can do it and we should be able to do it. And I'm looking at the end of the, uh, the sentence uh, on 517. It is only in a case where an imminent danger exists that LAs have a right to enter onto these sites. Now, how will we know? What are the sources of information that we may have to say there could be an imminent risk to uh, a collapse uh, or, or whatever uh, on a private tip? Marcus? Um, yep, yeah, I can answer that one, Councillor Adams. Um, Thanks. The, the, the issues with private tips are, are significant at the moment because the legislation doesn't allow that proactive inspection and it, it is an issue. So you don't know if there is a concern until generally it's too, something's happened um, and maybe at too late a stage to, to do an adequate quick repair. Um, but what I would say is that uh, we've been working with Welsh Government and the Coal Authority closely um, on a task group since um, Storm Dennis, uh, when the slip occurred up in Tylerstown. Yeah. Um, and uh, the Coal Authority have accessed all of the private tips and, um, within the, the authority that are categorised as C and Ds. C and D are the most high risk tips. Yeah. Um, so they, they've accessed them to make sure that there are no imminent concerns. There's, there's one uh, tip that uh, we do have um, some further investigation to undertake, but there's no immediate danger from it and there's no receptors um, below it anyway. So this is not as if there's properties or um, anything that, of concern that's that's near to where we, we are monitoring some of the um, slight slumps that have occurred on, on that tip. Um, so the new uh, um, legislation that the Law Commission are working on will allow access yeah to have that proactive inspection regime in place. Um, and that might be via a statutory body for the whole of Wales. They are things that are already being discussed um, so that there's a consistent approach across Wales. So the local authorities going forward may look, just consider the, the lower risk tips, the A and Bs, and this new statutory body may then inspect possibly Cs and Ds. But th there's a long way to go on that yet. The Law Commission need to um, publish the recommendations and then that needs to be considered oh, yeah. by the task group and recommendations then to Welsh Government as to the best way forward. Um, and the local authorities will have input to that. Um, I, I do sit on the task group for um, for the TIPS with Welsh Government and the Coal Authority um, as a representative. 
so we will have uh, first hand input to to it. Hopefully that addresses the question. Well, it, yes, it, it uh, goes a long way towards what I was, you read after 517 and the process is going on and forward to that. Uh, and as Councillor Pritchard outlined as well, do we have a good relationship with the majority, if not all of the private tip holders who, if they identify any qualms that they may have, will call us in and invite us to have a have a check with them? I would say this is probably um, a new arena that we're in with engaging yeah. with the private tips. Um, it's a process that, that started. Um, there's no real concerns being, being raised from allowing access to, to look at things. Um, and we've already uh, had an approach from one uh, private tip owner who's asked how we can access the funding to undertake some maintenance works. Right. Um, so we're working with them on that at the moment. Excellent. I mean, that, sh that should and I'm sure it does give us some confidence that uh, we have the ability to go where we, we might think we need to go. Thank, thank you, you Mike. Could I, um, Steve? Steve Kent. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, I am Marcus. Um, we're going back to a meeting about, I think it was about a year and a half ago, when you mentioned we were using drones for 3D topographical mapping for tips and inspections. Is that right? It's something that we we, we trial in at the moment. Yeah, well, have we, do we need, uh, is there any legislation preventing the use of drones to monitor tips on private land? Because obviously if you're using regular regular um, surveys, any topographical changes you're going to you're going to see through the mapping software. Is that still available for us to use on private tips? The, the um, ability to use them on private tips is, is there. Um, access rights over the land to undertake the surveys is something that we would have to um, take more advice on. Um, so we're only trialing the, the drone surveys on our own tips at the moment to see if um, how uh, accurate it is um, and how valuable a tool it could be going forward. So it's still in very, very early stages, but it, it would be something we would have to look into in a lot more detail for the private tips. Um, yeah, with exactly. regards to uh, the, the legislation uh, availability for us to access it via drone. Yeah, because if people don't want people on their land, yeah. they, I don't think they're going to worry too much about a drone flying over, are they? So it could be could be another way to just sell it to them for per yes. regular inspections. Yeah. All right, thank you. <coughs> Do you hear me? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I just want, wanted to come back on uh, just re-emphasise in terms of um, of the private and the local authority tips. Uh, I mean, they cannot be, you know, the legislation hopefully now will make way for, for there not to be that two-tier system. You know, it cannot possibly be right that a, that a private um, tip has less of an inspection regime than a local authority tip. The fact of the matter is there could be a private tip um, that's in, da in danger, um, of course, in some real damage. And there can't be a system in which uh, inspections don't take place, you know. So I would say that I'm I'm reasonably content at the moment, although things can be can clearly be be uh, be tightened up even further. That moves in this direction will clearly, you know, assist with that. Um, unfortunately, it's taken a, a major event such as the landslip in you know, in in Tyler's town, um, you know, to to really kick this uh, kick this going. But having said that sometimes out of a, a very bad situation there can be some real progress in the other in, in the right direction so um you know I, i'm content at the moment that the things are moving in the right direction but of, of course we can always do more thanks chair thank you jamie denver fine uh, fine thank you chair yes marcus if you possibly give me a bit of information please i've heard so much about tips and inspection of tips whether it be we own it or they own it I'm a little bit worried myself on my own experience in the ward that I'm from, I'm a can, surrounded by collieries, surrounded by tips. I'm I'm worried a bit, a little bit worried about access. I don't mean access permission, I mean road access to these tips if anything happened. Because I can take you to roads on, on tips in my ward where it would be very, very hard for unless it was a track vehicle, four-wheel drive, or whatever the case may be, to get to it, especially in emergency. Can you give me some info on that, whether they are responsible for the access to it, or are we responsible? 
Uh, obviously, our tips, we would be responsible for access, um, but for private tips, they would be responsible for access. Um, the it is in Prince, um, that's why I asked Marcus, because I, yeah. I do my own experience on them. But m m majority of works that we would do on tips would be accessing via four wheel drives or, tr or track machines anyway. Um, but the one thing that uh, is in place, the coal authority have got um, uh, a contractor available to attend to emergencies within South Wales if there ever is an, an issue. Um, and actually the contractor is one that's located within our, our borough. Um, and we've got a term service contract ourselves to access and the same contractor um, has been awarded that contract as well. So if there were instances where we needed to um, access uh, a difficult tip area, we know that they've got the experience and the equipment to be able to, to undertake that work. Thank you, Marcus. I think I know what the agency is, uh, ambulance, fire, police and everything like that. But I do thank you for that because I think I'm glad we've taken that one of you because I believe owners will have to look at their access to their tips. Thank you. Anyone else? No one else has indicated with a hand. No one else got any questions or comments? That's the case. I, well, I, <clears throat> I will recommend uh, 3132 and point, and 3.3. 3. 3. Is that seconded? Second. Kath? Thank you, members. A vote will now appear in front of you. Just complete that and submit. Thank you, members. That's supported, Chair. Thank you very much for that. Surprisingly, that's the uh, end of the agenda. Um, that went very quick, unfortunately. Last, our last meeting of this miserable year. I don't know where it's gone. It's gone very fast in, indeed. Can I just register, record my thanks to my Vice Chairman, Adrian, for his full support. Adrian, thank you very much. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. There would be a lot to have. And uh, also thank the members for their um, interest in the meetings and uh, the support that you've given me as a chair over the last 12 months. Greatly appreciated. Also from the members of the Democratic Services, and um, I will name them, Becky, Kath, Mark and Emma for their excellent support yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. for the meetings. <clears throat> I mean, you, you come to the meeting, but myself and Adrian experience between meetings. We have a lot of discussions and advice from these people. So, uh, you know, it's a teamwork at the end of the day. And also to all the officers who give their reports and that to answer the questions from the members. Thank you very much to, for your input as well. So can I wish you all a safe and a healthy future, wherever that takes you. Thank you very much. Adrian, do you want to say any comments, please? No, I think you said it all there too. Then, um... Like I say, you've learned me quite a, quite a bit, and hopefully at, um, after May the 5th, I'll be back in uh, one of these meetings, perhaps even sharing it. <laughs> well, <laughs> as, you very my, much, dude. as my apprentice, I will sign this. <laughs> the apprentice, you know, I do have qualified, all right. So once you get that certificate, uh, you know, that no matter what anyone else says, that's most important, all right. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, thank you, Jamie, as well, and all the best for you. Thank you for your efforts as the cabinet member. And I know it's not an easy job, but uh, at the end of the day, thank you. Always, very a, ple always a pleasure to attend one of your scrutiny sessions. Uh, I know, I know. I, as you know, I don't go to the strict standard orders. I like to I see it flowing and people enjoying themselves. Oh, I've never known you upset anybody, uh, Chair. i got to be honest, never um, have ever uh, you. I, I, I do that outside of the meeting, so there's no witnesses. It's all right. <laughs> anyway, wish you all the best and thanks again. All the best to everyone. No, you too. Thank you, Thank you, Susan. Yeah. All the best to both of you meetings.